What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Duality Podcast, where our motto is living comfortably uncomfortable. My name is Ian Perez, joined by Jonathan Mercado, Victor Rivera, and Chris Zora. We're four ordinary dudes with extraordinary dreams. Jonathan, what's up, dude? What's up, what's up, what's up? So, man, I just want to see, as always, catch everyone up, because, you know, a week, it goes by fast, but a lot of stuff happens within that week. And so, as always, Victor, tell me about your week, my man. Catch me up uh what is what i doing this week i don't know I think we but, just had one big event brother me and yeah you. the only thing i remember is that we played basketball yesterday and didn't go as planned <laughs> well <laughs> so check this out man we we're in a league me and victor we we're in the league and we're in the lower league of the ymca whatever league and so we we got some ball players me victor sergio and a guy named paul like we're pretty cold i i believe we're like cold we're I don't know if you guys know the terms of basketball terms. You got a hooper who just kind of hoops. All right. You might see him every now and then. He just hoops. You got a hooper hooper who's like, all right, he's at the ballpark every weekend and he can, he can ball. And then you got a hoop is, which like college level deal. Like these fools are called hoop is. All right. That's a three, three tiers. And um, I believe we're hoopers. I believe we all have these skills. We can, we can put us on points. And, uh, you know, we had a reality check real fast, brother, because playing from the ball to the, you know, in a, in a professional, not professional game, but in a real game with a referee, you know how it is when uh, we're playing ball 21 and we're trying to score the last two points. You know, everyone plays that lockdown D and it's like rough and you're getting fouled and nobody can score the last two points. That's literally how you are, how we were playing inside of the game. It felt like so fast paced, overwhelmed, like you couldn't get a shot off. You were getting hacked. Like it felt like scoring one point was like the hardest thing in the world. And there's, I don't know what happened, man. We blew it. <laughs> yeah, man. Like we, it was like messy the, when we started. It was like disorganized. I was like, and then, uh, like you said, it was like, I got hacked so many. I got like, I feel like I got bit. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, like that, that was from the game. <laughs> that looks like a bite. <laughs> yeah, it is not. It was like somebody just like hacked me with his nail. What was the score? Really crush um we got crushed at the end like it, it was up and down like we would make a run and we made it close like halftime or no like they're always up they were yeah. always up but we'd shorten the lead and they'll yeah. extend it man I went no, it wasn't the game. question though he said what what was the final score i was, oh, like, I think it was like 60 something 40 60 yeah something i was like 40 yeah okay. so we gotta be like uh, 20 points at the end the last quarter but, they just said pop, 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 dude pop, i would say this really. they they didn't miss they didn't they, there was one dude yeah, who wouldn't miss good. And all shoot. threes, like it wasn't even a two, it was like just threes. Yeah. And uh, we got our rebounded. They were pretty tall than us. <laughs> yeah, I played they in the were pretty tall. A, a while back, and I just it's a bunch of kids. And I, when I say kids, they're like early mid twenties. And there's always that one like OG dude on their team that just Knocks controls down, con- controls the the block. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah well, these dudes are on our age, but they were tall. They're like at, at least each one was at least six one, six two, and then they had this yeah. massive dude like six five. He was putting buckets, bro. He was a good yeah. post. Post. Yeah. yeah um, but I went to the game, wanted to you know score thirty three. Like I went to, like, we've been practicing, we've been putting in reps. I've been feeling good. The shot has been hitting. Like I've been feeling like really great. First, as soon as we get in there, <laughs> as soon as we get it, everything. It was confidence gone, man. I shot, like, my first couple of shots, bricks, brother. And then, you know, you, once you start missing, like, your confidence level to want to shoot again, it just goes down. And so I was like, okay, the guy that was guarding me, he couldn't hang with me. He was a bigger guy. I'd cross him over. But every time I try to go in the paint now, bro, they just come rushing in. Collapsing, so like, yeah. They just start collapsing. I was like, all right, cool. Figured that out. Shot a little um, a teardrop that went in. I was like, hey, bet I'm going to start going with that teardrop. But then they started collapsing again, and it left me to one thing, my mid-range shot, which you guys know. It, it no <laughs> one knows. So 10 minutes in the game, I shot a mid-ranger, and I came down. on. I only played for 10 minutes, guys. I played yeah. for 10 minutes, and I was out. I shot a mid-ranger, crossed somebody over, shot it, and he contested the whole entire thing. And I came down on his foot, and my uh. ankle literally touched the ground. Oh. I'm done, bro. Like my ankle is jacked right now. Jack. So it did not go yeah. how I thought it was, bro. Like in my head, I was like mamba, like ready. 
And then the confidence, brother. I don't know if it was from the fast pace, the the high pressure defense, or the crowd watching. Like, there's kids. My kids are watching. It's like, bro, like a lot of things played into effects. And uh, you could be really great ball player. And I felt like I was in junior high again. Like I was that good street ball kid. We got me in the game. I was like a nobody. That's, That's a lot of people. I mean, because it's a totally two different styles of play. Like, you're not worried about like like plays or anything like you don't have to worry about like the referees calling fouls and or and you don't have you don't have all those eyes on you like you said so it is different um it definitely changes things for sure oh yeah game speed is hey, two, di- did, two different things uh so, man so i was at first again it was all crazy and then we kind of get a feel but like for me i have to have like a structure and like a flow like and i didn't have that flow and it was like it was like people were standing around and then um so i didn't have a flow so the whole game i was off i think i shot maybe i i think i i made at first i think i missed my first two shots and then i made my third one and then i didn't shoot until like at the end of the game <laughs> um, like bro we were off even yeah. sergio bricked so many balls but he was the only one that was taking up the shots yeah, because the other so were like I like he was quick, coffee. so he was he was beating his man off the dribble, so yeah. he just kept doing that, and then and then like I said, they 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 keep leaving Paul like by himself, so he was just shooting, he was making it, and so, um, so it, it was kind of weird, but it I was, think it felt yeah. nasty, dude. It just felt off. yeah, and some of the players like we didn't like we so, like I would say three or four of them I hadn't seen before until that game, like, um, and so we yeah we didn't we didn't know how to play with each other and then and yeah no like, chemistry yeah and different styles of play like we were different like styles of play like, we were in the mindset of like all right we're gonna be like moving and rotating in it but the others were like in a different mindset like different thought process <laughs> um and so That's it was weird man but uh Whole thing yeah but hopefully next game i think will be good and um we'll be better for sure hopefully we'll be better for sure unless we meet this other like Six five team. <laughs> I'm telling you, the first five minutes of the game, or like the first five minutes of the game, would dictate how you're going to play for the rest of the game. Almost, it's like they said, the ninety percent of the work of your success is done up front, and the rest kind of just follows. And then if we take shots up front and we're missing, we're just going to become less trigger happy to want to keep shooting. Because I felt my confidence level just miss, miss, miss. Try something else, miss. I was like, uh, <laughs> dude, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think man, that's just, how it went. Yeah, I think next time we just get more control of the game, put more our style. Than- and who knows? Maybe you guys are playing one of the better teams in the league too. No, 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 no. We <laughs> saw, we saw the next team coming up. They were supposed to play the open division. They were all like six four and above, literally oh, wow. six four and above <laughs> the entire team. And I looked at, I was like, oh, that must be the open division. So just mm-hmm. like, no, I asked them. They're in our league, but they signed up accidentally in our league. And I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm going to miss that game. Out if hooper, hooper, <laughs> real, I'm, I'll be sick that weekend. <laughs> I can't even call myself a hooper hooper from the way we played this past weekend. Yeah, but those dudes seem like they like play college ball. Like some of these fools, I can yeah, they, tell they, they, that they look, yeah. they're like up there. Because I knew one of the dudes from the team that was playing before us and he plays semi-pro. Um, I met him a few years back. And then um, these have been to like different countries playing like, you know, in their pro leagues. Uh, I was like, crap, what the heck? I yeah, not playing. semi-pro. That is pro. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not like, in there. Yeah. You know? It's not the NBA, but yeah. Yeah. It's not those lower leagues. It's not like the premier basketball leagues, stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. but yeah. But anyway, that's how, that's how I went. And then I, I that's all I think about. That's all I think about <laughs> the whole day. But I was trying to figure out what was the silver lining of me getting hurt. Cause you know, there shit happens to you for a reason. Yeah. So I was like mad, like really mad internally. I think that made it worse because like he's a dribbler, so he would have done better for us. He would have like going in and then kick a out. lot of us because even if they collapsed, we would have been more open. Yeah. But that sucks because if you said Paul's hitting his shots and if Sergio can get going and Vic, if you can get going too. Like oh, there's yeah. no, like there's, it's, no, it's there's nobody quick enough. Going. Yeah, because there's nobody qu- that I can see, even if they're tall, like lanky enough. There's no one that I've seen as quick as you at our age. So the fact that you can beat people off the dribble and just dish it out, that, that probably would have been 
um something Edwin, hard for them uh, to but do. we couldn't find there like i said i was 10 minutes in 10 minutes i mean i was out did y'all play two three zone on defense or did y'all do man to man, man. Mm, man they were playing zone for a little bit you gotta do that in that type of league there's not many shooters but with a guy six five two three just keep somebody on them. i wanted to kind of do zone because it's like less less moving mm-hmm. around yeah not That's not just that but unless you have to you, like, you worry about your section and that way on yeah. that, all you have to worry about is on offenses you well, talk about it because i don't know the other fools know what that is but yeah. <laughs> 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 i know me Sergio and paul probably know it i know the other dudes i try to tell Sergio when you try zone he's like no nah, let's just go one-on-one i was like all right yeah it'll be hard mm-hmm. to just do it right in the middle there, I, I would say two of our players will probably didn't you know what like would be lost but man <laughs> tell me tell me about y'all's weekend go ahead chris go ahead, Ian. Uh, i'll go then <laughs> That's awkward. Hey, y'all, y'all need to hey, make it more you know, awkward. Or, you know, Victor, who who who's oldest? Vic. Victor, Chris, and the Ian needs to be last. Yeah, I'm the We're youngest. Like just age. I'm the youngest, but look, Victor's the oldest. The oldest. So I, I swing it to Victor. Yep. Victor swing it to Chris. Chris swing it to the youngin over here. What you got, Chris? And then, um, this weekend I I started to celebrate my anniversary um we just i want to shout out to vic's wife she made an amazing charcuterie board for us um welcome yeah so we ended up yeah we ended up having a picnic with the peacocks in mayfield park near mount bonnell Uh, so that was that was a pretty cool experience um i also want to shout out one of my best friends jamal he just moved out here from jacksonville um jonathan's met him he was the one that was getting everyone to dance at the wedding mm. the, at the little dude or the big yeah guy? yeah the smaller one yeah the, little, the adidas dude uh new balance yeah but new yeah ba- okay yeah, yeah <laughs> new yeah. balance yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 he works for new company. balance that's right yeah, yeah. okay um, yeah he's cool yeah yeah so yeah he just moved out here on saturday so i got to hang out with him a little that's bit cool. as well that's but, yeah. cool man yeah, man that's good no nice. nice. Uh, week it's it's pretty chill it's still baby stuff i i'm kind of in the same boat that jonathan was in not too long ago just i'm out of rhythm there's there's no cadence to my day it's just kind of going with whatever this little one is, is wanting but uh we'll get there um if i'm having a hard time my my i get my wife's a freaking superhero because i show i'm tired and i don't mean to and with her i i, I don't know if she's tired or not she's just smiling for the kids so Shout out to her. Um, I'm almost done with my book, so I'm on schedule. I'm liking Ooh, it. I'm nice. halfway through my book. Yeah. Um, and then I finally got cleaned up. I was looking. I see, man. Look at I, you. <laughs> I got a. The the barber was like, I was borderline hobo chic, so I'm <laughs> almost chic. almost there. <laughs> Other than that, that's that's it for me. That's the only reason why I like playing basketball with you is because when you drive, like your hair just floats. Hits you in the face. <laughs> like your hair. Like if you're if you're gonna cross me like, over, it's because of your hair. I'm just yeah. like, damn. So like you want to you want to slow mo? It's slow motion right. every time he drives in. It's like the slowest but most like smoothest drive ever. And I'm like stunned because so, of his hair just floating. It's so wonderful. Pretty. It's wonderful. <laughs> 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 All right. Like, yo, so you talked about not fighting Canaan's. Uh, you know, I think majority of the world cannot find any cadence, right? They go through this kind of uh repeat, rinse, wash, like whatever, just put the daily um to-dos on repeat every single day, right? You you go to work, you come home, you eat. You sleep and it's repeat work, come home, eat, sleep, repeat, like literally every day. And you're almost in this rat race, right? And uh, you can't seem to get out of it. And so today's topic, what we're going to be talking about is probably one of be, going to be one of my favorite topics because I'm very passionate about it. I think my passion from fitness is now transferring, transferring over to this part of my life um, because I, I'm always... I want to know how to get better every single day so that way I can pour into others. And we're going to talk about uh, self-care for men, I believe, which is extremely taboo. And we'll talk about reasons why it's taboo today. But a good phrase would be how to normalize self-care for men. And 
we're going to do a deep dive because it's super important. If you're in that rat, uh, rat race, if you're, if you're lost in the sauce, you don't know how to get out of it. You're not motivated. You're depressed. You have anxiety um, and you're, you're putting on some pounds and things just aren't swinging your way and you're working, you're working really hard. And that's why you keep justifying that, you know, you don't have time for yourself. Um, you're, you need help. And that's like step number one, just like anybody else, you have to realize when you're there, and you maybe need some friends, maybe you need to talk to your wife, maybe something needs to happen, maybe listening to this episode, and you're like, yo, I'm, I'm right there. Well, today, we're going to talk about the effects from being in there too long. We're going to talk about how to overcome that and how it's going to help you and your life and, you know, take your life to that next level. And so off the bat, guys, a couple of things on self care is what is self care? So I, I was looking into that, um, kind of get more of a, a general standpoint um, as far as what self-care is. And this is a, a whole world of things. Um, most people, and I, I posted on Facebook over the weekend to see what people would say about it as well. And I got, I got some comments there. And from, from generally from what people perceive self-care is, or what most people do, is just, um, it's like a, like a stress management um, like activity. Yeah. Uh, managing stress or managing um, like negativity type. So it's kind of kind of more of things that centers you and calms you down and refocuses you from the, the chaos maybe that might be going around you or the stuff that you deal with work, at family. work, family, yeah. all that stuff. But as you as I go into it, that's how I thought about it, too. So, you know, uh, that's how I thought about it, too. But when I was looking into it. It's more than just that, like self-care. It's not just um just that but it, it's it's physical it, it's uh, psychological mm-hmm. um uh uh things also as far as um your environment like all those things kind of contribute to what might There's a lot that goes involved yeah they might tip the scale to your balance of your life um so um so it was pretty cool for me like i was talking with my wife and telling her all this stuff and things that i read i was like that's interesting yeah. For some reason, saying self care as a guy, when so like just say I knew nothing about self care, that sounds like me getting my nails done. Like that's I what I was gonna girl, say, right? Yeah. Like I'm gonna get my nails done, <laughs> yeah, and, taking care uh, of your skin, doing yeah, like like as a dude, it's not normalized. It's not a thing. Women dominate the self care industry, like women dominate it. And so for a guy, it's almost when you say self care, it's like. It's like talking about handing over your man card. I think that's, yeah. yeah. And in, in, in the stuff I was reading and, and things you grew up with as well, just, and just being a man, like it's these things like that, that you're not supposed to do. Like in the man, you're like, Hey, you know, don't cry about it. You know, uh, no, stuff no. like that. Yeah. They say be a up. man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> be a man about it. Like, you know, don't, yeah. Don't talk to him about your emotions. Just push through, you know. Yeah. So self care is kind of stigmatized. It's like, yeah. oh, um, like only weak, only weak people need to do that. Like men oh, are women. supposed to. Oh, women. Yeah. I mean, what are you, girl? Women are weak. Oh, being a girl. Yeah. No, but, I mean that's kind of the percent. Yeah. I mean, obviously that's not the actual truth, but like people, they're saying, oh, like if, if you're a man and you say you need self care, like you're looked at as weak or less masculine. Yeah, me- less masculine, or it's like, oh, like he he doesn't. Uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry. Wears uh, panties instead of underwear. <laughs> um, yeah, That's but not normal. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> only the only on the weekends. On the just yeah, in, in, in the summer, it gets hot. John Carl Van Dam did wear panties in the the movie. Um, what's where he has the. Uh, a twin double oh impact. yeah double take double impact yeah. 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 i like would say double take panties. double impacts <laughs> still panties like that was like a perfect example as masculine and less masculine right you had that one van damme who was all like masculine cigar kick some butt wear boots and the other van damme was like silk panties and shaved and fresh cut oh yeah um, i remember what i was gonna say now i was, I was gonna go. say like when you when like when they say self-care they don't they're like no you just need to focus on taking care of everyone else don't worry about taking care of yourself that's the last last thing you need to worry about do your job make the money like do all these things that they just pretty much 
provide for your family. Like I know oh, Ian talks about it all the time. He feels like he needs to provide for his family all the time, but he also needs to make sure he's taking care of himself as, as we all do. It's funny. I love how you say that. Cause it almost goes back to like being primitive. Women are to take care of the family Like cares in that word. Like they're the caretakers and the men are the providers, right? Like we just need to provide the women need to take care. Right. And so I think that's a reason why it's kind of gone in that direction where women can dominate. Um, not that they don't need it. I think it's equality. I think we both need it, but just for a guy, a more primitive, you know, mammal state that we're just providers. We don't need self-care. We just need to keep providing. We need to keep working. We need to put everyone's load on our back and just bootstrap it and get to work and just, you know, not complain. But I'm here today saying that's not how it's done. Like that's the last thing that you need to do. It, it's not good for you. you. I don't know how long you can sustain it. You might be in that trap where there's depression, there's anxiety, there's weight gain, there's strength, there's energy loss, there's mood swings. There's a lot of things. If you don't take care of yourself first, you cannot take care of others. And women understand that. That's why they do so, so well with taking care of other people is because they, now is the time that women are pouring into themselves and they're able to pour back big time especially when they have a big family or if they're in leadership or in these big roles, they, they understand that. And today's topic is we want to normalize self-care for men. Like we need to make a stand right here for us gentlemen who are as masculine as can be that self-care is a priority and not something that we need to push off to the side. Can y'all agree? 100%. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think, um, I think also because women are more in touch with their feelings, like we're we're talking about, oh, they're more expressive of them, um, or more. I think it's more aware. Words. And then us, we tend to not say we're not aware, but we tend to like push block it, it push mm-hmm. it aside. I'm like, uh, you know, stuff like that. And then we, and then, but I, I think that like it, it bottles up, it bottles up. I think when um, I think for my analyzing my own self is in like if i um you know things that throughout throughout my life i i hadn't done like take care of myself in certain areas like it bottles up and it and it comes out negative in in different areas of my life um and so you know and and i think uh for again for for i think it's just for most people like you got to be aware of your needs of yourself in knowing where do you need to, you know, spend some time doing something that you love or you enjoy. And, and it could be doing something or doing or doing something simple as like meditate or just sit in silence or just, you know, whatever it is that is going to kind of help you kind of release a little bit of stress, release a little bit of whatever you need. Um, uh, but I think you just got to be more, first step is just be aware of, hey, you know, I, I need that time. Victor, that was going to be my question to you guys. How do you know when you need self-care? All right, then you just kind of answered it. You, you have to be aware, but a lot of people are, are just not aware. Like, to be honest, um, how, what's some good indicators where you feel like something's wrong, I need to work on something? For me. What's like the first thing that comes in your mind? Yeah, for, for me, uh, and it happens far too often, and I hate it, <laughs> but I'm admitting it, um, a burnout. Like just a- automatic, automatic. Like I don't feel motivated to do anything. Uh, the just the sheer laughter and and just my kids running around being hyper. That should make me happy as a father, but it's kind of it, it borderlines like annoyance and frustration. Why they have to be so loud? Why they always running? When in reality, is like they're still alive. They're breathing. They're playing. They're still here in my home. So yeah, for me, burnout is is my my main one. I got one I mean, when you when your clothes fit too tight. Yeah, I was actually just gonna say like you had already mentioned a lot of the different factors. Like uh, for me personally, yeah, I've been I've felt the burnout for a while now. I've also have been gaining weight. Like I'm almost back to where I was when I started CG, <laughs> or I might be at that same weight um, that I started at. Um, and I mean, I've always lacked sleep, so I I can't use that as an excuse, but I'm I'm feeling more tired than I normally than I normally am like these last couple of months. Yeah, a lot more fatigue. And yeah, it just 
and I know part of it just because I've also added more things to my plate, but I'm not also adding things to take care of myself. And I, I that's something I've always kind of struggled with was taking care of myself. Like, I mean, I used to go work out and, and do stuff like that, but, um, and, but now my, my self-care right now has been reading, but that's not enough. I need to take care of my physical as well as my mental and my emotional and my, yeah, like just every aspect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to add to it, I think it's just for me, it's always been like either like lack of motivation. I think when I lacked motivation to do things, um, uh, for me, I, I'm very like, try to over exceed or overachieve in things. And then, but there's comes the times like throughout the year, I feel it where I'm like, I lack motivation. I really don't feel like doing anything. Um, I, so, I feel you on that one. Yeah. Yeah. To, um, and then, uh, so that when I feel that for me is when I feel like, all right, I haven't really done anything to focus on me because I, I, I like motivation. So, um, and then and coupled with like maybe energy, kind of what's what Ian was saying like burnout or like lack of energy, but also like lack of motivation. Sometimes I feel like those comes together. I feel you. So I like to, Chris hit it just now, but he hit it pretty quick. And I want to touch on it a little bit more. Um, I believe we have four different cups that need to be refilled every single day, right? Some people to maybe touch on a couple here and there, and uh, maybe they're making a little bit of, little bit of progress. And, you know, doing something is better than not doing nothing at all. But I believe there's four cups and, and people believe there's three, there might be two, there might just be one. I believe there's four, right? There is your physical fitness that you need to refill every single day. There's your spiritual, there's your mental. And the last one that I want to add is love, right? The love language, the love cup, right? The love tank mm -hmm. is, they're all tanks that need to be filled every single day. And uh, when men tend to get into that, I'm just going to put everything on my load and keep working. And then, you know, it, all that energy you don't have anything left to give to your family. Like you come home tired. I went through this, which I've been on an endeavor to kind of regain, you know, sex drive, libido, energy, fitness, intellectual. I'm just trying to pour all my tanks to their overflowing so that way I can give more. And by doing this daily, right? figure out a routine. Now, I don't ever recommend anybody doing everything all at once, right? That's just like going into fitness. You don't want to do fitness plan and, you know, five, six days of working out. Cause that's, that's burnout right there. Like you are not, you're not utilizing self-development the right way, right? You don't want to go too extreme, but you know, you want baby steps. And so I would, I would recommend finding your weakest spot, right? Because if you run low, it leaks out into your family. And Victor touched on this when you're tired, you're going to be more stressed out. You're going to be more angry. You're going to be bad mood swings. Your wife, you're going to have not a great relationship with everyone else. And you're going to justify everything for it. I work hard all single day. I get it. But you know what? Not to say you don't, but everyone works hard. Everyone work, works hard in their head. And it could be two different work hearts because I've experienced both. And I'm both, I'm entirely exactly the same. Yeah. I did manual labor, eight to five, work on cars in a hot garage, came home like a zombie. I've done entrepreneurship where it's not manual labor, but through meetings and training and c content creating the mental fatigue, I'm just as tired as if I did manual labor, but maybe even more because my mental, mental game is like mentally weak. Tired, yeah. It's oh. weak, brother. And so I experienced both worlds. And so that's why I've been on the endeavor to like, man, what can I freaking do? Because my relationship with my kids is not there. My relationship with my wife is like non-existent. And it was just not a good place. And I kept justifying this. Well, I'm just bringing home the money. Like, you know, just like everyone else, I'm the provider. Like, that's why I'm justifying why it's not a good reason to justify why I'm not a great person to everyone else. I believe kindness will rule it all. And so. I like that you had said um, that it takes its baby steps, because if you try to, to jump into self-care like too quickly and do try to do everything at once, like work out and start reading or Meditate. start doing like a meditation, doing all this at one time, you're not going to stick to it. It's going to eventually you're going to, you're going to burn out even trying to do that. Like, even though you're, if you're trying to do that to help you get out of burnout, you're just going to cause a different type of burnout. No, for sure. Um, Ian just did practice a, 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 um, a certain era of self-care. What did Ian just get done? 
Uh, my hair did. Haircut. Like that's a simple way to clean up to when you look good, you feel good, you perform better. Like it's a yeah. science, brother. <laughs> it's not even the look for me. It's just like physically feeling old, the old leave my body. Like it it feels feels really good. And I don't know. I I'd say it to the barber, I say it to Steph, my wife. I would I need to just do it once a month. Once a month. Like I'm getting my nails done or something. Go get either my beard trim or my haircut. Uh, like put it into a routine so that I know on this day that I'm, I'm going to feel this particular way. Um, yeah. My body don't look good, but my hair look fly. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it is like having that um, putting things down at least once a month or once a week or, or daily, whatever it is that, that, uh, that can contribute to taking care of you um, is, is going to make a difference. Just keeping that there. Um, one of the things that, um, I started doing, and that's why, you know, we, we, we it's just playing basketball. Like before I really met you guys, I hadn't played basketball. I never did. And that was one thing that's a big part of my life. And I've always, and it's been like a, like a sort of meditation, which is like, when I play basketball, like, I don't think of anything else. Like my mind just goes like, like blank, like, you know, I can kind of leave you everything clear, out. Yeah. You clear, yeah, your clear head. my head everything when I enter the court, everything stays out. And I'm just focused on what I'm doing and nothing else. Like nothing We're else. Knocking out a mind. couple of things about playing basketball. That's physical fitness. Yeah. And yeah. that's you clearing your mind, not thinking nothing about any stress you have, but basketball. Yeah. So, okay. so, so that's something that, you know, I, I picked up that and trying to keep it consistent because it does just bring, makes me happy. And I would say also it, it can be sports, but it could be anything that you're interested in um that you like uh, i was talking with my wife is like sometimes in relationships like we talk about how if you're not taking care of yourself it leaves seasons relationships i think a lot of people that divorce um it, it's because you know they say like it, it, their um their differences what was it called i forgot what they put on there but um to where they can't get along anymore or they don't see eye to eye anymore um they grow think, apart yeah and i think because yeah. they they kind of lose themselves because a little bit right when yeah. you go into your family into a relationship you kind of you want to give and you want to like compromise and do all that and then sometimes you just forget about yourself you forget and then the other person you're forgetting about yourself so you're not the same person that that oh, your other sure. fell in love with so now that creates clashes and leaves others and whatever so i think also when you do self-care you're just being true to yourself to that person that your spouse or your girlfriend kind of fell in love with you yeah right um because we talked about them wise like what happens if people break up then they start hitting the gym then they start taking care of themselves yeah <laughs> they're like mm -hmm. why need to do that in your relationship that early on. Yeah. yeah um so i think you got to be not i guess selfish not the right word but just really spend your time for yourself things that you like to do if it's sports if it's reading if it's collecting coins whatever <laughs> yeah i like that you said like oh you're like if you wait until after your divorce like and then you start doing it like do you, if you're waiting if you're waiting until there's a, a problem then you're you've waited too long like you need to start doing it you know like today like just sure. start yeah just you just need to start and i want to play devil's advocate on what you said it says you don't want to be selfish and i want to disagree and say you need to be selfish and i think that's a problem because we have that mindset with self-care, self-care automatically triggers you're being selfish. And that's why we tend to yeah. veer away. And it's just because society is like how we labeled it, but it's, it, it does the exact opposite. When you are selfish and you pour into yourself, you are now able to pour more back out. And I, yeah, I think it's like adding sense, by, yeah. by subtractions, like, yeah, you're taking away like, or maybe perceived as taking away. Cause I was it's investing brother. Yeah. Like it's I investing. feel guilty sometimes when I do stuff for myself, I don't know if you guys do, but sometimes I feel guilty, mm -hmm. but then like, but, but, but it's, I don't know saying the, it's the truth. It's like, yeah, you, you're, you're, you're being selfish, but then like, but then you're actually going to, you're, you're giving it back. Yeah. All right. So, so here's the problem I ran into because over I've been practicing self-care for about three, four years. And yes, I stacked on, you know, and then I've gotten to the point where I'm about three hours in of my self-care and to like an average person, they're like, Oh my God, you spend three hours to yourself. And I may be spending three and a half, maybe four hours of meditating, 
uh, foam rolling, stretching out, um, working out, cardio, and reading. It's like these six things that I must do at the early, early on in my day so I can get back way more. And my wife, I used to feel really guilty, but my wife even said, no, you need that because when you do that, you are a way much better person to be around. You give back. You feel so much great. You make me feel better because the energy that you put off, you're more happier. You have more energy. Like you, you, you're just in better moods. And I had to like shift that mind. That was the hardest part with my self care is because it is something that I do every day. And if I miss one, I'm like uneven and I feel it. I'm uneven. And I feel it. And so I think, man, you hit the nail on the head. Selfish is not selfish. It's not selfish at all. When you put it into, when you put it into um, more of a positive light of what you're, you're able to give back, you've got to invest in yourself first. And when you invest in yourself, it pays back tenfold. And when you decide to play the selfish game, that's when you are really being selfish because when you're not pointing at yourself, you're not able to give shit to anybody else. You can't pour from an empty glass. And like they say about air, like on the airplanes, like you have to put on your mask first before you can help other people put theirs on. And I think I want to shift that mindset. I think that's why most guys will freaking, if we go into a dad's group, I think most of us are in like a dad's group. Um, and oh, yeah. I bet if you put about self-care, how do you feel about it? I bet you it would be like lopsided with that's my wife or like, no, I, I take care. Like you'll see a lot of macho stuff on there. And I, yeah. that's the opposite, bro. Like, I, that's why I want this podcast. We got to blow this one up. It needs to be the complete opposite. You're going to do way more good by pouring into yourself than being unselfish in the terms of I'm not going to pour in myself and then you're not going to have nothing to give back. So what's, what's, some, um, what's some hard passes that a guy might say like uh, for not doing self-care? Like what are some rejections? I'd say... Uh, the easiest thing is I, I don't have time for that. Boom, don't, let's go. Yeah. I don't have time. Like, dude, I work manual labor. I come home, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to eat my hot plate, go to bed and put on repeat, provide. How can we help that person? I would say like, um, I mean, there's always time. There's always time for everything. You just got to make time. I think if you, one of the things that you can do, which is comes back to my, um, uh, like time management, just write down your day, like write it down, like write all the things time that you do because yeah, during, during the day. And then you'll, you'll, you'll find like, oh crap, I spent an hour on Facebook, <laughs> you oh. know, or I spend, you know, two hours watching YouTube or whatever. Right. So then you'll find out you do have the time. You just don't really know it. Yeah. Right. So then it's now the, now what you mentioned is time blocking. Like, okay. Instead of, you know, spending an hour on Facebook, I spend an hour on, you know, exercising or reading yeah. a book or picking up a hobby or something like that. I like how you said that, because when um, I get into nutrition with coaching, I tell them to track their day before I give them macros and they, they'll tell me like, I don't eat enough or um, whatever the case may be. It's always the opposite. Once they actually track it, they're like, oh, I do eat a lot and it's a lot of junk and they don't really notice it until you actually have to track the rest of your day. And so that, that's a great way some, of some self-assessment. Like if you're just stuck, you don't know how to incorporate um, self-care or anything into your life because you're so busy with work, you're so busy or you're so exhausting, you're so tired, you're overtrained, whatever the case may be, track your day. Yeah, like they say, like um, I was, when I was reading a little bit about self-care, like, they, like you guys are kind of leading up to, it's like, like just write in a journal. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly like, like time blocking or like uh, marking what time you how much time you spent doing this but it just kind of talking to, or just writing down like like different parts of your day like how how those things made you feel and like kind of analyze so you can analyze your day and see like what what worked for you what wasn't working for you and what can you do to change that i just started journaling like that is like the missing piece that I've been doing since mm -hmm. I've been on this spiritual journey, deep dive. I just started journaling and it's for me, it's not organizing because I got time blocking down for journaling is me getting stuff out, out of my head, yeah. getting stuff off my chest that I normally wouldn't tell nobody, but I'm telling this journal. 
and it, it feels it feels so relief it's a stress reliever for me so i'm able to get everything out go to bed on like an empty head and then wake up just for a little bit more refreshed and that's another thing that like like a lot of men might think as being like more feminine it's like oh you're writing in your diary like with my gel yeah. yeah my gelling paint i do yeah and yeah with your pink gelling pens and <laughs> use different colors yeah. for each come day. at me bro yeah. that, that's my, something i've been wanting to are do bigger than yours <laughs> <laughs> i get around to your do bubble it, letter <laughs> uh, journaling um but i think i do some i see a form of journal i just don't write it down i, I do like I think to myself a lot and I just kind of like analyze and like talk I mean, things through in my in my head to myself when I'm like do say, early in the morning but I don't write it down they do say something about like writing it down releases different types yeah, of yeah like I was about to ask like so. do you write or do you type it out on your phone because I mean you always have your phone with you so like maybe in a particular time of the day you're, you're kind of feeling something so you kind of type it out instead of writing it my down. my wife but, does that well, instead of writing, he types it into the mm -hmm. notes, the Apple notes. But I think it's a little, I think it's the 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 They're action writing. of putting it down Actual on paper writing. has yeah. some sort of difference, I think. I think no, yeah, it is. There's a little science to it. There's science yeah. to it. It gets Creates you a little technology. euphoria. Yeah. Just because, yeah. I mean, how many times throughout the day after school do we sit and actually write for more than a second, which is not our, you know, our signature, so. And especially if I want to write a book one day, I'm gonna to have to learn how to write. Okay, Matthew, right McConaughey. now, like I'm practicing, like I'm already speaking it into the world. I'm practicing. He's actually doing what the McConaughey like. Yeah. Hey, write a journal, <laughs> turn that into a book. <laughs> hey, man, you know what? I was just watching a podcast and it was about successful people, and they're like, "Yo, just successful people do one thing great. They copy other successful people." Literally, that's true, bro. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Like nobody's reinventing the wheel at all. Nobody. Yeah. It's just another idea twisted in some other way. Same blueprint. Now they're up there with them. Yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna try doing uh, doing journal. Yeah. I, have, I want I to. Hey, book. man, let's 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 right quick hold each other accountable. Journal. I group. want everyone to try a journal at least one time this week. I'm gonna write how mad I was about that game. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I journaled about that video. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, went, I went down and I was trying to find the conclusion of what was going on. And I came across like it's confidence, brother. Yeah. Like it's confidence. If I just went in and hit that first bucket, it would have been game over, lights out. But since I missed I, like the first three, do, 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 confidence was just gone, brother. I actually just found an article about how to journal. I haven't read it yet, but I plan to look at that and actually do want to. I don't know if I'll do it daily. I, I hopefully I can get to that point, but I definitely would like to try something different to because I'm kind of in a rut right now. Send it. I'm, I'm I want to take a look at it. This podcast. Yeah, is good I'll, for you. yeah, I'll send it to you guys. I'm gonna try this once a week. I'm gonna start once a week and then go from there. Once a week. Yeah. And then so I do like a weekly review almost. I was a hypocrite. <laughs> I made my kids journal before I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i have a question funny. for you guys i have a question for yeah. you so like what is one thing that your your wives do like before they go to bed and this is something that that can really help out guys as well um but like what is one thing like your wife will do in like before she goes to like bed and just in general like, uh, stat, no, just in general i, I got one for we you might have to do a different podcast on mine St stat. <laughs> 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 but steph steph uh does like skincare like before bed she brushes her teeth she washes her face off for the day and then she puts all like the moisturizer and all that whatever exactly. they could put on their face and i'm over here like i'll brush my teeth tomorrow i'm laying down but every night <laughs> well, every single night like clockwork that's what i was gonna get to like that's exactly what i was thinking about. like i was another thing i was reading about is like like just so there's something like you were talking about getting your hair cut and, and like Jonathan mentioned looking good you or like if you look good you feel good you perform good um same thing goes with your skincare and just kind of having like a routine before you go to bed um there's something about that it also makes you like when if you do every day before you go to bed it, it's kind of also telling your body it's time to go to bed uh, so that way it could help actually improve your sleep, which I'm curious to try because obviously I've I'm gonna try that. I have bought. sleeping issues, but yeah. you're gonna do skincare before you go to bed. 
I'll probably I'm, start I'm trying. A, yeah. I'm gonna tell right now. Go ahead and uh, uh, mail me your man card with that. I'm just like, bro, I'm talking about not what the podcast is about. <laughs> I'll just play. <laughs> I bought a uh uh an anti-wrinkle cream thing uh like no uh, like like probably a couple weeks ago. I've been forgetting to do it, but uh it's like getting all these wrinkles up in here, but Dog, make you like, like I 20, stay mad. <laughs> like I stay man, let mad. Let me tell you something. I hate that. Speaking of handing your man, man card, what's one thing that you feel like you do that makes you a little less manlier? Well, that's one. It's putting my cream on me. <laughs> mine, I'll tell you, mine is watching chick flicks. Off the bat, I love that. Me some chick flicks, some rom coms. No, that's so weird. Rom com, <laughs> freaking nineties, nineties romance. Ah, oh, yeah. melts my heart. Yeah, there's been a lot of chick flicks or just like shows that are typically that women will watch more. That sometimes I'll, I'll watch. I just uh, finished a whole season today with my wife because I told you my wife's first day back from vacation, and so yeah. while I watched uh, Baker and the Beauty. Baker and, the beauty. <laughs> Baker and the beauty brother oh, that's so funny. i saw the preview for that i was like i, I don't know if I, even my wife was like i don't know if i can watch it, <laughs> it was it was good brother <laughs> was it <laughs> it was good but hey man that's that's my uh less manly thing that i do on top of taking bubble bath no bath bombs i'm known to take bath bombs too Mm, I don't. I don't fit in my a... tub. Yeah, no, I can't. yeah, I've never I'm been. Tub, I do a lot of like non manly stuff. Yeah, I've never been big on like baths in general. Like it's not that relaxing for me. It's just kind of boring for me. So I handed it with my man card a long time ago, brother. It's gone. <laughs> I don't have one no more. No such thing. I think the closest for me is uh, those glasses. So- <laughs> no, no, no. Those glasses look dope. I know I like them. I just like giving you a hard time. I like teasing. Don't believe me, my hair looks nice. Okay. Part of my uh, self care is teasing. <laughs> Releases the stress, puts it on somebody else. Yeah. No, Starbucks. I don't know why. I just feel like that. I don't know. Dudes don't really drink coffee from Starbucks, and it's more yeah, of like a female thing. Too, okay. Uh, I'll, you can. Stress. I'll hand you mine when you hand me yours for the bath bombs. Uh, well, mine's been gone. I ain't got one. <laughs> <laughs> he lost it a long time ago. <laughs> I, was, I started taking baths. It so was basically, gone. we're retracting everything we just said previous part of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to recap. Yeah, you know, I do want to recap because I feel like this episode can help anybody out that's like I said, just going through these symptoms of burnout, depression, more anxiety, um, super stressed out, bad mood swings, low energy fatigue, sex drive, um, low energy levels, just all the above, guys. If you feel any one of these symptoms, um, it's time. The time is now to shift the mindset. Self care is not just for women, it's for men. And we need to normalize it. We need to speak more about it. Um, Speaking of, me and uh, Victor have a presentation um, this coming up week or next week, not too sure which one, about men's health. And we're going to be covering for for a company with like five a 1,000 employees. I don't know, about a 1,000 employees. We're going to be speaking to them through Zoom. Unfortunately, we couldn't do it in person. But about self-care and normalizing it and how it could really take you out of that rat race and really take you to the next level and not just live life day to day. And I feel like most of us been there, which is day to day repetitive, but not just live life, but thrive, like really thrive and give and pour and uh, serve others. Absolutely, man. I 100% agree. So uh, men out there, go take care of yourselves. You know, it's, uh, 30 minutes to an hour. Let's do it. Yeah, don't don't start three and a half hours like me. You you might get in trouble. <laughs> Easier way into that. Hit yeah. us with a quote, uh, Ian. I like it just because it it's just listen to it first. So it says courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. Uh I picked that particular one just because we as men um fill up our cup with nothing but pride, and sometimes that can be poisonous. Um, pride can, can keep you in, in a prison from seeing what needs to be fixed. Uh, mm. pride can make you become, um, a, a very pit, pitiful person. Um, so, uh, and I say that from, from experience, uh, I, I, I battle with that mentally is my pride. And that's, I think that's why I know I need to do things, um, like my wife does, uh, self-care, think of me in, in, in my head my pride is, is too much. I don't need it. I'm good. I'll get over it. 
Um, so men out there, dad out there, dads, I think I want to say, especially just because, you know, your kids see everything, um, and you definitely don't want them carrying that trait. So, uh, push their pride aside. Um, as these gentlemen said, you know, you have to be happy in order to help others be happy as well. Um, but as always, thanks for joining us today. Till next time, peace and love.